Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome to my sewing channel. I'm very excited for the video that I'm going to show you today. This dress was three years in the making. I will explain more over the course of the video. I'm really happy with how it came out and I hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. And if you like the video, like the video. And now let's get into sewing my vintage dress that took me three years. For this sewing project, I'm going to be using a vintage reproduction sewing pattern. This dress is modeled off of a 1950s dress and it has significance for me because this sewing pattern was the first one I saw on YouTube and I fell in love with it and I fell in love with vintage sewing. Angela Clayton sewed this dress and she had difficulty and it scared me away. So here we are almost three years later and I decide to give it a go. I think I've had enough experience and have built enough confidence to try and sew this dress. And so the first thing I am going to do is to make a mock-up. I have learned that this is necessary and Angela Clayton had fit issues with it, so I am quite certain that I will too. After I cut out the pattern pieces, I move to the first step, which is gathering the bust down between the notches. Angela Clayton did this by hand, so I did it by hand as well. The next step is to stitch the darts in the bodice front, which is piece number two, and that is what you see me doing here now. And so I proceeded with the mock-up. I followed pretty much all of the instructions to a T. I didn't want to leave too much out when doing the mock-up, just in case it fit well or the fit could be adjusted to where I would have another complete bodice and perhaps have more than one dress. So that's what I did. So this is the only issue I'm having with the mock-up. So this is the self-facing part that's supposed to turn under. And in Angela Clayton's video, she talks about stitching the facing to this top edge and then it will make it turn over. But I don't see how that happens when you have all of this extra fabric here. And then since I didn't do the bound buttonholes, I had already turned the facing in. And so what I did was like cut the top part free. And I'm going to stitch it down with this and then turn all of that in together and hopefully it will give that a clean edge. I'll do the same over here where I fold this in and then put this on top of it and just stitch it down and hopefully that finishes that edge nice and cleanly. I don't know what else to do. I rewatched her video and she just breezes through it and says how good of a technique it is and how she really likes it but I for the life of me cannot figure out how it works but for the rest of it I have it all pinned in place I'm gonna stitch it down and hope that little technique works I already put in my buttonholes and for the most part this bodice fits really really well I'm glad I did follow her and go down a size because normally I cut an 18 and with this one I cut a 16 and it seems to fit very well. I normally have to shorten my waist, but when I tried this on a few seconds ago, it was, it sits at a really good part. And so she actually have had to lengthen hers, but I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything to mine. I can definitely see where she talks about the shoulder situation. So once I get this um, together, then I can kind of figure out where I'll need to put in some adjustments to make it sit better on the shoulder. But other than that, and I pretty much completed this. I even have the buttonholes in it. Um, I really, I have the facing on. I really wanted to be able to see how it looked in the most accurate way since I'm not really good with alterations. What I'm guessing needs to happen here is I need to take room out of here. I think that will help the gaping in the back as well. So I'm ready to move into... The real dress from my mock-up I realized that I need to take I need to take an inch and a half off of the back bodice piece and then it'll also need to come out of the back facing so what I'm gonna do is just set that mark on 
top of this mark. I reckon that should get the job done. Okay, at the center back, what we're going to take out just like that much, like a little sliver, and that should help with the gaping. So after making the alterations to my pattern pieces, I got out the real fabric. Here I am measuring out the grain lines to make sure that I'm placing the pattern pieces correctly. This is also a necessary step when sewing dresses or any garment rather that I used to ignore and now I take a lot more seriously. It affects the way that the garments lay or hang. And so as I'm putting down all the pattern pieces, I am making sure that the grain lines are marked correctly. Also, I switched the fabric. In the beginning, I wanted to go with this rainbow fabric that I had, this cloud pink and blue. Um, just because it's been so gray here, I wanted something that felt like spring, but I did not have enough of it, and so I switched to this white with blue and black. Um, this tree pattern on it, there is a name for this tree, but I cannot think of it for anything. Hopefully before the end of the video, I remember. If you know what it is, please tell me. So after getting the pattern pieces cut out, I am preparing the interfacing. Pieces one and two will get it just on the edge and pieces five and six will be completely covered in interfacing. So I'm preparing those pieces to head to the ironing board and get this fusible interfacing ironed down. And so now I am back and transferring all of the markings. I had a really cool pin that goes away when you iron it. Um, it came with refillable ink, but when I tried to refill it, it wouldn't go in. So I'm using the pin refill without it being inside of the pin. And I did check to make sure that this would go away when ironed on my fabric and it does. And so I definitely like this more than the chalk, which sometimes doesn't go away. And sometimes does go away, but when you need it to still be there. And so now I am back to step one, this time not on the mock-up, but on the real dress, and it is the gathering at the bottom of the upper front. On the mock-up, I did this by hand. I wasn't that happy with how my gathers looked, so I did it by machine this time. And so now we're back to more marking on piece number two, which is the bodice front. And then we are going to pin in the darts and take those to the sewing machine as well. I still can't really even believe that I am finally sewing this dress. If you've had any idea how long I've looked at this pattern and how many times I've seen Angela Clayton's video on this dress and I was just terrified to sew it. And so I am moving forward this year with following through with my sewing, sewing things that make me scared, and sewing things that I'm going to love. I have often on this channel sewn things that I didn't particularly like because they would make better videos or because they look better on camera. Like I'm not even a big print person, but watching me sew just black garments or white or gray garments all the time would not look as aesthetic on camera. And so I've sewn a lot of things that I don't particularly like. And so I don't really make New Year's resolutions, but for my new year, that is my goal is to sew things that I really like and that I am going to wear even if I think it's out of my skill set or if I think it will make a boring video. So I hope you guys decide to stick around anyway. So now that I've got the upper front and lower front together, what I'm gonna do now is work on this back piece. And so it needs darts put in it. And then I also said that this is where I was going to taper in at the center back to help with the gaping that I had, which I also took an inch and a half off the top of the shoulder. This is fine going into the waist, but we're gonna try and taper this in in a way that makes sense, but not taking out very much. I'm not sure of the best way of doing this. I think I'm gonna put in the dart first and I'm going to stitch it at the five eighths and then see the best way to kind of ease it in. 
I think that's probably going to be my best bet. If you know a better way of making this alteration for the gaping that I had in the back, as well as the tightness in the shoulder, I wasn't sure if I should take out this out of the front and the back. But I ended up just taking this out of the back bodice because I was scared to do anything that messed with the room in the bust. So I'm not really sure what that is going to leave us with, but we shall see. So I won't keep you in suspense. I will tell you now that when this dress is finished, I absolutely love it. This sewing project definitely boosted my confidence. I love the way that the dress fits me few issues still but I'm so proud of the fact that I made alterations that were needed and sewed something that was flattering to me and to my size and this makes me excited to sew more so look for more videos to come for me more often than they had been I think sometimes I would have a project not go so very well and then it would leave distaste in my mouth and I wouldn't want to sew anything for a while and so oftentimes there's a big gap between my videos but I think as I'm becoming a faster seamstress and more confident, I will be able to put out more content. So please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm now working on the facing. I didn't have any more fusible interfacing, so I interlined it with some scrap fabric. I hope it's substantial enough. Then I'll stitch the center back and then the sides to it. So I have the front bodice piece. I haven't pressed this yet because I don't want to erase my markings. So I know I have the fold line and then the center line. And I had issues with the facing on the mock-up. And so I need to, I'm going to do this this way before I put the buttonholes in. Take this across here and then... I'll be able to put the facing on because the facing was really weird. I could not figure out for the life of me how to attach it in a way that finishes this edge. It finishes the side. So as much as I loved the final garment and even the process of sewing this dress it was not without its issues the instructions were weird and the way they want you to face this and still do the buttonholes and all of these things like a lot of it made no sense to me and i could not compre comprehend for the life of me how to follow these instructions but what I was most proud of is I was able to figure out a way to get it done based on techniques that I have learned through my own sewing. So a way that worked for me and still gave me a finished garment that I was proud of. I think a lot of times when you're sewing vintage or even vintage reproduction like this is, you have to be more intuitive because a lot of the instructions expect that you are a home seamstress from that era that sewed quite often and had been doing it since you were a little girl and had been instructed by the other women in your family. And so this was just more of something that was common knowledge. And so I think you have to be able to roll with the fact that you don't know what they're talking about. So you just watched me pin the front to the back bodice and then off camera, I took it to the sewing machine. And now what you see me doing is getting this facing pinned in place so I can take it to the sewing machine as well. For this, I used so many pins just because I wanted to make sure I had everything the way it was supposed to be and that it would not shift and move on me. But like I said before, this facing was so weird and I had to make adjustments of my own. So I finally got the facing all pinned in place and now I'm going to get it stitched down and then once I do that I can start to work on the buttonholes and the bodice is pretty much done. Um, after all of that I have to um, 
get to work on the skirt. Okay, on a side note, I have a question. If you look here, you will notice that my fabric is often not held down good enough or moves in a weird way under the presser foot. Is this some type of adjustment that I need to make or I'm just not sure, but it feels like sometimes that I don't have enough control over the fabric. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Just let me know what your thoughts are or if you have any suggestions. So with the bodice mostly completed, I decided to get to work on buttons. I was a little upset that I had to cover buttons because I had lots of different blue buttons in my stash that I really liked. Even some authentic vintage ones. I just did not have enough for this dress. This dress requires nine buttons, I believe. And so I had eight of some that I really liked. I had six of some I really liked, but not nine. So I decided to cover them myself, which is always an adventure. You have seen that just go flying and so, yeah. I love covered buttons, but they are definitely a thing. Okay, so another sidebar. I think another reason why I put this dress off for so long is because of the nine buttonholes. Buttonholes are always a thing. I think I usually can get about 80% of them to look great and the other 20 is just garbage. And so questions about buttonholes because that was the case with this. They all went well except for one. So I got about 90% of them good. But should my tension be higher or lower or is there any tricks or best practices for buttonholes that you would like to share? If so, please feel free to leave it in the comments. So after putting in eight really good buttonholes and one really terrible buttonhole, I started to stitch or tack rather the facing down at the side seams as well as sew on my covered buttons. Next, we're gonna pin the bodice together at the shoulder seams, matching up the notches and take that to the sewing machine and this is going pretty well. So we have a bodice. I like the way it fits. It's really fitted, fix the, you see, the gapping in the back. I was able to fix it by tapering that seam. And overall, I really, really like it. I really like the button. And so now it's time to get to work on the skirt, which of course I didn't mock up because that would have just been a waste of fabric, but I'm getting it cut out now. I think this is going to be pretty simple and pretty quick. I know that Angela Clayton says there's not a lot of instructions regarding the hem and she made a mistake on these pleats. So I'll be aware to not make that. It's a box pleat, I believe, at the center back and then just, I guess, regular pleats. I remember when I was so terrified of pleats that if a pattern called for them, I would just do a gathered skirt instead. And so this time I definitely wanna do the pleats and I'm making sure to put in all of the markings um, on the outside of the fabric. And so they want you to stitch the skirt together before putting in the pleats. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pinning together the skirt at the center back um, and then I will take the pieces to the sewing machine. So I took the skirt panels to the sewing machine and after stitching the skirt together I began to work on the pleats. But first I would like to show you those buttonholes. So as I said the majority of them came out really well but this one in particular is a nightmare. So any tips for buttonholes, don't forget to leave. And so the pleats weren't as hard as I expected. 
I am left-handed, so sometimes I do things backwards. So I believe I was a little confused as to which direction they had to go to at first. And I think I ended up taking them out, even though I was right, and then redoing them. But in the end, I got them done, and they looked great. You like that name, Major? Yeah. Me too. What Julia. Julia? Julia? Mm-hmm. You just heard my kids in the back and we were watching Finding Your Roots and Julia Roberts was the one who was on and so they really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed having them in the sewing room. I think sometimes I don't get to sew as much as I want because the weekends are usually for them and of course the week is for work and school and homework and all of those things and so now I've started to ask them to join me in the sewing room and so that way I can sew but still spend time with them at the same time. I will say though sometimes I do want to be in my sewing room alone but it definitely helps to be able to spend time with them and to get some sewing done at the same time. So after getting the pleats pinned in place I took it to the sewing machine and basted those down. And then I pinned the bodice to the skirt and took that to the sewing machine and stitched it in place. After that, the dress just required the finishing work, like the waist stay in the inside. And I pinned the hem in place and then took it to the sewing machine and got it stitched. And this dress was complete. So here I am with the dress on, putting on my shoes in the kitchen because it is too rainy and gray outside. I am wearing a petticoat that I made um, a couple of months ago and it made this dress look even better, but look at it. I love this dress. I love everything about it. I'm so proud of the alterations that I made. I love the buttons. I love how it sits a little bit off the shoulder, but I did a good job with making it stay up. I Love how low it is in the back. I'm definitely gonna need a different bra to wear because it's so low, but it's really, really good. And I love twirling in it. I feel really good in it. The waist stay is a great addition that really just cinches you in and it makes me feel a little bit slimmer and just really, really pretty in this dress. I love the fabric. I love everything about it. I will definitely use this pattern again. Please be sure to leave me some feedback in the comment box below. Let me know what you think of the dress or what was a project that you put off that you finally completed that you're proud of. I'd love to hear it all. And I will see you in my next video that is soon and sure to come.